Today, I want to take you through um, some basic algebraic techniques of simplifying algebraic expressions, as well as the terminology that's really, really important um, when looking at algebra. So just to clarify with the words that we use when we are talking about algebra, when we use a letter to represent an unknown value in maths, that's called a pronumeral. OK, um, now the coefficient is the multiplier of the pronumeral. So that's the number that you see directly in front of a pronumeral. Then we have uh, constant terms, which are simply a number. So no, no letter, no pronumeral, um, just a number. And then, of course, like terms, that's probably, I guess, the trickiest one. Um, like terms have exactly the same pronumeral. So um, x and 2x, they are like terms, for example. So we'll get straight into it. We've been asked to write an algebraic expression for the number of tickets needed for three boys and our girls. Obviously, the tickets in total, you would need to add those together. So you've got three plus r. Then we have the cost of P pies at $3 each. So, of course, you will need to multiply um, your cost by your number of pies. So that in turn becomes 3 times P, which we would write as 3P. We don't actually write multiplication and division symbols um, in algebra. So if we were asked to write an expression for three more than twice x, obviously twice x looks like two times x. Um, so we'll write that as 2x um, and then plus three to get three more than that. The sum of a and b divided by four. Now this is where you need to read really carefully because it's not a dividing by four. It's not b dividing by four. It's the sum of a and b dividing by four. So you need to put a plus b on the top of the fraction and then all over four okay as i said we don't actually use um division symbols when we are writing algebraic expressions in their simplest form then we'll need to um substitute okay so if we're substituting we're given a value for each pronumeral and then we need to insert that into the given expression so our first expression is 7a minus 2 outside of a minus c. So then we take our values for a and c and we put them in the place of those two pronumerals. So we have 7 times 5 instead of 7a minus 2 um, outside of 5 minus 3. So I've just substituted um, 5 and 3 there for a and c. And then I just work that out as normal and it gives us a value of 31. So just another example using those same values, we'd have b squared minus a c, okay? So again, just inputting our values. So instead of b, we've got negative two, so negative two squared. Now ensure you put that in brackets so your calculator knows that you are squaring negative two and gives you the correct answer, um, minus five times three in instead of a c. And then we end up, of course, with a value of 11. Okay, now we're being asked to simplify expressions. As I mentioned earlier, simplified algebraic expressions don't include multiplication or division symbols. So our expression three times two B, we can multiply our numbers as normal. Um, so we've got three times two is six and then multiplied by B of course is simply six B. Um, and then our second expression, negative 2a times 3ab. Now, this is where we need to make sure that we have an understanding of what it means to multiply something by itself. We have negative 2 times 3, which, of course, is negative 6. So we deal with the numbers first. I want you to deal with the numbers and the pronumerals separately. Then you've got a times ab. So a times a, anything multiplied by itself is squared. So a times a gives us a squared. Um, and B is not multiplied by anything um, that, um, that's going to change it. So we, our final answer ends up being negative 6A squared B. So simplifying division is similar to simplifying multiplication um, with algebraic expressions. We don't want to um, have any division symbols, so we use fractions. Um, but we also, we deal with the, the numbers and the pronumerals separately. 
So when we've got 6AB over 18B, we look at 6 over 18. Well, 6 over 18 gives us 1 over 3, okay? Um, keep that in mind because we're not actually going to end up with a 1 in our answer. Um, AB divided by B. Now, what I want you to look for is common pronumerals on the top as well as on the bottom. So you can see there's only an A on the top. What that means is it's not divided by any other A's, so nothing's going to happen to it. It's going to stay on the top of the fraction, whereas B appears on the top of the fraction and the bottom of the fraction. So B divided by B, like any other value, is 1. So we end up with the top of our fraction being just A and the bottom of our fraction being only 3. So we get A over 3. So our second example has been written as a division. For us to work with it, we need to rewrite it as a fraction. So we'd rewrite that as 12A squared B over 3AB. And then we just simply work with our numbers and our pronumerals separately. So 12 over 3 um, is, of course, 4. So that means I have a value of 4 on the top. Okay, and then I've got a squared b divided by a b. Now, if you think about a squared and what that means, it means a times a. So I've got a times a dividing by a. So what that means, I've got two lots of a on the bottom, on the top, and an a on the bottom. So one of those a's on the top and one of those, and the a on the bottom is going to divide by each other and obviously it's going to be removed because it is equal to 1. So that just leaves an A on the top. B divided by B, of course, is 1. So the Bs are going to disappear. So we simply end up with a value of 4A. So the last thing I want to focus on today is looking at like terms. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, like terms contain exactly the same pronoun. And when we're adding and subtracting, um, algebraic expressions, we can only add and subtract like terms. So if we have an expression 3x plus 4 minus 2x, we can't do anything with that 4 because it's not like the x's. It has no x. So the 4 is going to stay as is. So we're simply just going to work with the x's. So we've got 3x take away 2x, which is, of course, x. And our, so our final simplified expression is x plus 4. It gets no simpler than that. Okay, so don't be afraid of um, answering or simplifying something with another expression. As long as it's simpler than what you started with, you have simplified. Then our second example is 3x plus 2y plus 4x plus 7y. Um, so we've got two different pronumerals here, so we just deal with them separately. So we've got 3x plus 4x, that gives me 7x. 2y plus 7y gives me 9y. So my final expression would be 7x plus 9y. So then our last expression, I guess, is one that confuses lots of students because the pronumerals are the same, but they have varying powers. So it's really important that you have an understanding that b is not the same value as b squared. So in that sense, they are not like terms. However, when you've got a b, that's actually the same as b a because a times b is the same value as b times a. Um, so because they have the same value, they're like terms. So if we've got a 8ab squared minus 9ab minus ab squared plus 3ba, we're dealing with that in two chunks. So we've got 8ab squared minus ab squared, which is going to give us 7ab squared. And then you've got negative 9ab plus 3ba. So they're like terms. We add 3 to negative 9, which gives us negative 6ab. It's really important to note here that the operation in front of a term belongs with that term. So that 9ab, because it's got a negative in front of it, or it's actually a subtraction symbol, but because that's in front of it, we use that as negative 9ab. So always make sure that you include the operation um, with the term that comes 